Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're looking at another classic 80s train set from Hornby, the Blue Streak. Daniel Tarasov commented on my Nightmare Retro review asking for a steam train review and they don't get much steam trainier than this. So this one's for you, Daniel. I hope you enjoy. If you've got any requests of reviews that you'd like, please let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to make it happen. This is Hornby Reference R682 and was released in 1987 and 1988 and it features one of Hornby's most iconic models, the LNER Class A4 Pacific Sir Nigel Gresley. Way back in 1938, Hornby had just launched their new 00 range and they offered two locomotives, a 062 freight locomotive in a few different liveries and a Sir Nigel Gresley. So this model has actually been released a few times since that 1930s release. Triang had a version in the 1970s, there's this one from the 1980s. There was a limited edition version released in 2008 as part of 70 years of Hornby and most recently as part of Hornby's centenary celebrations they recreated the original 1930s set and released the LNER Sir Nigel Gresley 00 train set. But we're looking at the late 80s version, so let's open it up and see what you've got, starting with the locomotive Sir Nigel Gresley. Before we talk about the model, let's talk about the real Sir Nigel Gresley, because it's actually a really special engine. It's an A4 Pacific class locomotive built for the LNER, London North Eastern Railway. And this was the 100th Gresley Pacific off the production line, and it was named after its designer. It holds the post-war steam speed record of 112 miles per hour, which it achieved whilst pulling a full train of passengers back from an excursion, which is pretty impressive. It was withdrawn from service in 1966 and has been preserved and is currently being restored at the National Railway Museum in York. And fingers crossed, I'm there next week, so hopefully I will get to see it if they've opened up the restoration area again. Now let's get back to the model. So I'm not sure whether super detailed models existed in the late 80s, but were this to be released today, it would probably fall into the railroad budget range. And having seen pictures of the more recently released 00 train set, the model included in there is significantly more detailed than this one. But that doesn't mean this is a bad model. So first appearances, you've got that distinctive blue colour that went with the LNER livery and was famously found on Sir Nigel Gresley and the Mallard. You've got the Sir Nigel Gresley nameplate on both sides and the running number on both sides of the cab and at the front. The handrails on the sides of the cab aren't separate pieces, they're just moulded on, but they have been picked out in a separate colour. The running rail down either side of the um, boiler is actually a separate piece though and made of metal. No sprung buffers on this model. Plenty of moulded riveting down the side. You've got glazing on either side of the cab and a couple of windows at the front. The level of detail in the cab isn't particularly good, it's all moulded um, and there's actually quite a large hole beneath the firebox which seems quite dangerous. But they have picked out some of the detail in a separate colour but it's nothing special. You've got a couple of valves on top and a whistle and to me it looks like that could be metal, it might be plastic but anyway I can't tell um, but they've picked it out which is a nice touch. All the weight for this model is in the tender, and that's because that's where the ring-filled motor is. So this is a tender-driven locomotive, which is pretty standard for models that were produced in the 80s. Half the pickups are on one side of the tender, and the other half of the pickups are on the other side of the locomotive. And there is a pin connection in the middle between the tender and the locomotive that completes the circuit. And having half of its pickups on one side of the tender means on the other side you get these rubber traction tyres. And I, I know some people really don't like them, but this was pretty common practice for tender driven locomotives in the 80s. In terms of detail on the tender, again, nothing special to talk about. The LNER livery is nicely applied down the side and they've picked out the moulded handrails, but other than that, not too much to talk about. And the coal load doesn't look particularly realistic. Let's take a look at the coaches and I really like these. You've got two composite coaches and one brake composite all three in the LNER Teak, and I think these are really smart looking coaches with the yellow lining around the doors and the windows. 
One minor frustration is that the two composite coaches both have the same running number, but I can look past that as they're just so elegant. The level of detail is pretty basic, but the build quality generally feels really good, and they've got a bit of weight to them. They've got the usual molded plastic compartment interior, you get the standard tension lock couplings, and the wheels are plastic. Just like the locomotive, they're not the most detailed, but they're pretty impressive for a basic model, and they look great being pulled by the A4. So what else did you get? Well, not a lot really. You got the power controller and a single oval of track, which compared to the other retro train sets we've looked at seems a bit odd. The Nightmail had the infuriating bag capture thing, and the Midnight Freight had literally everything Hornby could cram into the box. So this seems a bit basic, but those weren't steam locomotives, and that's the big difference here. You didn't get the valve gear, the coupling rods, the pipe work. This is a far more complex model. It doesn't need extra track or gimmicks to make it exciting. What you're paying for is its looks and to see all those parts move as it goes round and round. So how much would this have all cost? Well, it's not on the official Hornby price list from 1987 or 1988, but my dad has helpfully made a note on this price list from the 1st of January 1988, and he thinks that it would have cost $54.99. But what's that in today's money? Well, I think that's going to be between £140 and £150, which makes this set really quite expensive. So let's try and put that into some sort of context. The current Flying Scotsman train set is retailing for between £140 and £150. And just like the Blue Street train set, you get a railroad locomotive and three teak LNER coaches. However, you do also get a siding, a track mat and a re-railer. So maybe on this occasion, my dad didn't quite get a bargain. However, the limited edition Centenary 00 train set, which is available now and also includes a Sir Nigel Gresley locomotive, is selling for £225. So that's £75 to £95 more than you would have paid for the Blue Streak set. Now, yes, it's limited edition and the model is a step up in terms of detail and quality, but you still only get a looper track and you only get two coaches instead of three. So all that extra money must be going on detail. Does the model look £100 more detailed? I'm not so sure, I don't own it. Let me know if you have an opinion in the comments, but I think for now I would save my £100 and buy a whole nother train set with that money. So in summary, it's a really nice model of an iconic train set, but Hornby made you pay for it. It seemed pretty expensive, and were I to find myself back in the 1980s, I think I would have to give this one a miss. There are better value train sets out there. or wait for it to turn up in the sales. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a like and a subscribe, and I will leave you with some shots of Sir Nigel Gresley running around Little Wicket. Thanks for watching, and I will hopefully see you again soon.